I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about iodine as a nootropic. Yes, iodine. What it is, why it's critical to your nootropic stack, and why your stack won't work well if you don't have sufficient iodine in your system. I'll touch on the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Iodine is an essential trace element that combines with the amino acid tyrosine to form thyroid hormones T4 and T3. T4 contains four iodine atoms and T3 contains three iodine atoms. Iodine deficiency is recognized as the most common cause of preventable brain damage in the world. Even moderate deficiency results in a loss of at least 10 to 15 IQ points and the reason I've added iodine to my list of essential nootropics. Insufficient iodine is not only a problem in developing countries. Studies have found that even in Western countries, iodine deficiency has become a critical health problem. Your thyroid gland absorbs iodine from your blood supply to make and release thyroid hormones, and your thyroid affects every cell in your body and brain through the hormones T4 and T3. Within your brain, T4 is converted by, to T3 by selenium, which then affects gene expression controlling metabolism within cells and activates the catecholamines dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Malfunctioning thyroid function, which is often caused by insufficient iodine, results in poor cognition, difficulty learning, problems with recall, depression, and anxiety. The most common source of iodine in our diet comes from seafood like kelp, saltwater fish, seal meat, whale meat, oysters, mussels, and lobster. Iodine is also found in beans, milk, and milk products, uh, spinach, and vegetables grown or produced from soil rich in iodine, typically found near coastal areas of the world. The most serious iodine deficient parts of the world are mountainous and inland areas, including much of the agricultural producing areas of Western countries like Australia, Canada, the USA, and Europe. Iodine is absorbed by your thyroid gland for the production of thyroid hormones. The pituitary gland in your brain releases thyroid stimulating hor hormone or TSH, instructing your thyroid to release T4 and T3. T4 and T3 are produced by combining tyrosine with iodine and released in your bloodstream. Thyroid transport protein then carries the hormones to target cells all over your body, including your brain. Nearly all of your body's functions in nearly every tissue rely on thyroid hormones. Their actions and influence are so wide-ranging that you cannot live without them. Thyroid hormone affects your brain uh, development, heart rate, lung function, blood function, bone growth, steroid hormone production, including the breakdown of sugar, fat, and protein, and even some immune processes. Iodine is even involved in how the nootropics in your stack are utilized by the cells in your brain. The bottom line is iodine could be the most important addition, or one of the most important additions to your nootropic stack. Now, iodine moves brain health and function in several ways, but two in particular stand out. First, iodine is critical for neurotransmitters. Iodine is required for the function of thyroid hormones T4 and T3. Thyroid hormone receptors in the brain help regulate the production and the use of all the important neurotransmitters. Not enough iodine resu results in too little T4 and T3 in your body. Symptoms of inadequate thyroid hormones, or hypothyroidism, includes insomnia, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, depression, dry skin and hair, cold sensitivity, frequent and heavy periods for women, and joint and muscle pain. In the second way, iodine is required for a healthy immune system. Iodine is antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiviral and has anti-cancer properties. Your thyroid is the main storage site for iodine. But this mineral is also concentrated in our glandular system including our salivary and sweat glands, ovaries, breasts, pancreas, cerebrospinal fluid, skin, stomach, prostate, and your brain 
all contain high concentrations of iodine. Iodine is a powerful method for removing heavy metals, like halides like fluoride, chlorine, and bromine from your system. These chemicals compete for the same thyroid receptors in cells used by thyroid hormones. So removing these toxins will help thyroid hormones do their job of gene expression and metabolism. Iodine is needed by the thyroid to produce the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. Part of the endocrine system, the thyroid secretes hormones that enter your circulatory system and are transported throughout your body. Every cell has receptor sites for thyroid hormones. Neurotransmitters are used by neurons to communicate with one another. The presynaptic neuron releases a neurotransmitter which then binds to a receptor on the postsynaptic cell. Here we're going to explore how neurotransmitters relate to the endocrine system and thyroid health, and what can go wrong. Thyroid hormones are involved in gene expression needed for neurotransmitter release. Low levels of iodine results in low levels of thyroid hormones, which results in low neurotransmitter levels. First we look at iodine and serotonin. Several studies have shown that low T3 results in reduced levels of serotonin in the brain. So, if you don't respond to SSRIs for depression, it could be due to a thyroid hormone imbalance, and the result is depression. And then we have iodine and its relation to GABA. In animals and humans, there is a direct link between thyroid levels and GABA. Thyroid hormone affects enzyme responsible for the synthesis and degradation of GABA, levels of glutamate in GABA, GABA release and reuptake, and GABA receptor expression and function. GABA is your body's natural Valium. GABA can help turn off stress after you get upset, or even prevent a stress response in the first place. Low iodine results in low levels of thyroid hormones affecting GABA, which can lead to depression or anxiety. And then we have iodine and dopamine. Thyroid hormones play a critical role in the dopamine release in your brain. One study showed that an imbalance between thyroid hormones and dopamine could be responsible for restless leg syndrome. And then we have iodine and acetylcholine. Thyrotrophic releasing hormone, or TRH, increases acetylcholine synthesis. One study showed that those with hypothyroidism had significantly decreased acetylcholine in the hippocampus, and that administration of T4 normalized acetylcholine levels. Insufficient iodine can result in hypothyroidism and negatively affect acetylcholine synthesis in the brain. This affects cognition, memory, learning, recall, and mood. Not enough iodine in your diet negatively affects neurotransmitters in your brain and can result in depression, brain fog, anxiety, learning and memory problems, and ultimately lead to diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Now most neurohackers associate iodine with the thyroid because iodine is needed to produce the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. But iodine is also concentrated in your salivary glands, stomach, breasts, ovaries, eyes, and your brain. Deficiency in iodine in any tissue will cause problems in that area of the body and weaken your immune system. Symptoms of low iodine show up as brain fog, skin problems, fibroids, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue. Iodine can kill bacteria, fungal infections, and viruses. Iodine will remove fluoride, chlorine, and bromine, and helps your body detox heavy metals like mercury and cadmium that other detox, detox methods can't remove. Iodine helps prevent and even reverse breast cancer and helps prevent mental retardation in young children. Your brain needs sufficient iodine for cognition through several mechanisms of action. This essential element is involved in gene expression that controls the synthesis of neurotransmitters in your brain and how they work. Iodine helps remove fluoride throughout your body, including your brain. Studies show that fluoride can damage your brain, reduce intelligence, and impair uh, memory. Fluoride has an, even been associated with the dementia, according to a study by the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. 
One recent study showed that water fluoridation in England is linked to higher rates of underactive thyroid. One of the simplest things that you can do to boost cognition and your thyroid is to stop using fluoridated water and toothpaste and start supplementing with iodine to remove the fluoride toxicity and boost thyroid health. Iodine deficiency disorders are considered one of the biggest worldwide public health problems today. Studies around the world show none of us are immune from thyroid uh, iodine deficiency. Estimates range from 10 to 90 percent of the world population don't get sufficient iodine depending on where you live. So iodine, adding iodine to your stack if you are deficient is one of the easiest and least expensive ways to prevent and even cure a host of health problems, including boosting cognition and memory. Many neurohackers report an increased level of focus, energy, memory, and cognition, cognitive ability when supplementing with iodine. You should also experience improved quality of sleep and have an overall improvement in mood. Others report a profound difference in energy levels. They are more alert, and fatigue in the afternoon disappears. I've noticed that since I started supplementing with iodine. A few even report a significant improvement in tinnitus. One of the most common reasons we use nootropics is to boost memory and mental energy. Memory loss drastically reduces quality of life, and simple brain fog makes it difficult to accomplish the simplest of tasks. Research has shown that iodine is involved in memory, learning, and cognition on several levels, and supplementing with iodine is, a, is one of the most fundamental things you can do to boost cognition. I've got a study over on Nootropics Expert on how iodine raises the world's IQ. I've got another study that shows that uh, iodine deficiency is associated with ADHD. So check out the transcript on Nootropics Expert. Recommended iodine dosage is very difficult because everybody needs a different amount based on your body's ability to use iodine and the level of exposure you have to daily toxins like fluoride, chlorine, and other halides. If you are dealing with severe health problems, then your dosages would need to be higher than someone trying to maintain good health. Now for maintenance and for optimal cognition, natural health practitioners once thought that 25 milligrams of iodine per day was good for maintenance. But the information on the exposure we have uh, to daily to toxic load from bromines, chlor fluorides, and chlorine, Bob Barninger system may require higher doses. Natural health doctors are now recommending a minimum of 50 milligrams of iodine per day. For cancer, cancer is a, is a result of mutated cells, and iodine is critical for the P53 gene, which prevents damaged cells from dividing. Iodine and selenium helps P53 do its job of eliminating abnormal cells. Cancer patients have used uh, 50 to 300 milligrams of iodine per day successfully. Now, supporting supplements to take with iodine, this is important. They include selenium, 100 to 400 micrograms per day. Selenium is required for the production of T3 and it assists in detox. And vitamin C, uh, 2,000 to 5,000 milligrams per day helps support thyroid um, symporters, which transport thyroid hormones through the body, including across the blood-brain barrier. And it assists in detox. And then magnesium, 400 milligrams a day. Iodine is fat-soluble and should be taken with food, particularly if you have a sensitive stomach. The supporting supplements can be taken at any time, at the same time as your iodine dose, or even earlier. Iodine should be taken early in the day because it can increase energy levels so, so much that it could cause problems with sleeping. Most forms of iodine can cause diarrhea and bloating, particularly at higher doses. 
If you've got a sensitive stomach, you could experience stomach pain, and it's the reason why we suggest taking iodine with food. It's also possible to overdose on iodine. So please, start at a lower dose and see how your body reacts. Symptoms of iodine overdose include abdominal pain, delirium, fever, vomiting, and shortness of breath. Iodine is a powerful method for removing toxins and heavy metals from your body, which can also produce unpleasant effects as you detox. So if you experience flu-like symptoms when starting iodine, it's very likely that you're feeling the effects of toxins being flushed out of the cells in your body. For more uh, on iodine toxicity, you can browse a very extremely poorly formatted, very long post on Toxicology Data Network. I've got the link over on Neutropics Expert. Iodine is sold in many forms, but the main thing to look for, does the product contain both iodine and iodide? Your body needs both forms. Breasts look for iodine, and the thyroid needs iodide. Now, contrary to some people and some sources, your body cannot convert supplemental iodine to iodide. It's also important to find a product that provides milligram doses versus micro microgram doses. Microgram doses will offer very little health benefit. And they're much more expensive compared to uh, a product like Lugol's. Lugol's liquid is iodine and potassium iodide. They've got 2% and 5% solutions. Then there's iaterol, which is Ludol's formula in pill form, which is iodine and potassium iodide, 12.5 uh, milligrams and 50 milligrams. Then we've got Biotics Research Iodizyme, 12.5 milligrams per tablet of iodine uh, and iodide. And try iodine by Vitamin Life, which is 12.5 milligrams per tablet of iodine and iodide. And you can double check these dosages over on Nootropics Expert. Just search for iodine and it'll take you right to the article. Now the forms that are not recommended nascent iodine, which is iodine in its atomic state, and it's very low dose. There's not enough to detox heavy metals, fluoride, bromine, and chloride, or to saturate tissues. Then we have iosol, which is iodine only, and the microdoses have the same issues as nascent iodine. We also don't recommend prolamine, has about 3 milligrams of iodine and 20 milligrams of calcium, which is too low to detox the body and saturate tissues. Now, pure encapsulation, encapsulations, Solar Ray, Source Naturals, Progressive Labs, and now Foods all offer microgram doses of iodide only. And then kelp. Don't recommend kelp as an iodine source because of its low iodine status and not being able to determine levels of iodine and possibly toxicity due to arsenic and halides. So my Nootropics Expert recommendation for iodine is 25 to 50 milligrams per day. And that's my report on iodine. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to NootropicsExpert.com and search for iodine or click on the link below this video. There, you'll find a full transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. Now, if you have any questions or you want to share your experience using iodine, please use the comment section at the bottom of the post on NootropicsExpert.com. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. If you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.